Hi, this is Sokil Bharatiya and today we have with us two guests, Kashyap Vadarmudi, a product manager at VMware and Chip Childers, executive director of Cloud Foundry. First of all, welcome to the show. Uh, today we are going to talk about Packeto Build Packs, which was announced. Um, I don't want to get into that old debates about Docker files versus build packs. We have talked about that for ages. Um, but there are two things that I do want to talk about uh, before we talk about Packeto in specific. And that is, uh, I had a you know, long discussion with Dirk Honda at VMware. And one is compliance and when is security. When you look at, you know, you put everything in a container-like image. You don't know the source where it's coming from. You, if you're a big organization, you may run risk of compliance you know you don't know whether the, the 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 application that you're running there is compliant with you and also security because there may be hard links to something you, you don't know what is running so how does build pack solve these two problems so we have a couple things we're uh we're constantly shipping build packs in um uh, just whenever a upstream security vulnerability comes out a new language family version things like that um, so build packs make it much easier for, especially for enterprise users, just to conti uh, continuously make sure that their apps stay like up to date and secure um, and compliant. Um, so this is, a, I think, a huge value proposition of like what build packs offer versus uh, using Docker files to run your apps and to build your apps in production. The history of the Cloud Foundry project is is you know. It's been using build packs since nearly the beginning of its uh, inception, originally at VMware, right before it kind of took its journey to Pivotal and then uh, the CFF. And um, so build packs uh, have demonstrated their value when used with a platform that's able to, to implement them effectively um, a, a few times, right? In particular, I'm thinking about like the, the uh, OpenSSL Heartbleed vulnerability. Um, I found that to be a great example of when uh, languages and runtimes don't embed too many things in, you know, in, in their distribution statically, um, then you're able to use the build pack process to roll out security patches to these, these really important underlying libraries very quickly. Um, in, as an example, you know, Ketchup said that you know, the build pack project has always, um, and will in, with Paketo, um, they've always been keeping up to date with all the critical vulnerabilities or high vulnerabilities from, from all the languages and frameworks that get pulled together. Um, we had a, um, you know, the OpenSSL update rolled out uh, to the, the whole ecosystem and it managed to percolate through, you know, all the uh, platforms that, that had um, the CF build packs embedded in them very quickly, like in a matter of days. Um, and it, it was really smooth. Uh, you know, the only hiccup back then was that Node.js actually included the OpenSSL library in its own distribution. So, um, you know, I think it was about a month or so after uh, Heartbleed that they they split that out. Um, and then build packs could be more effective at, at helping to support some of those underlying libraries. Thank, thanks for explaining that. And if I'm not wrong, last year, uh, CNCF also announced, you know, a build pack project, if I'm not wrong. Is that correct? I may have the timeline totally wrong. So uh, my, my question is that why is, why, why is you know, Pivotal or VMware now as part of the same company working on this build pack? So what is the difference between what CNCF is doing there versus what you try, guys are trying to do here? That's a great question and probably like the biggest question we've been getting asked with this whole launch. Um, so the CNCF Cloud Native Build Packs project, they build the underlying like specification and tooling needed to like build a cloud native compliant build pack. Well, the Paketo project is just a set of language family implementations on top of these cloud native build pack uh, specification. So we build implementations of uh, when we launched uh, the other day, we have Java, Node.js, PHP, .NET Core, um, and probably a couple others that I'm missing uh, build pack implementations on top of that spec. And why do you call it Packeto build pack? The specific reason for this naming? That's a great question as well. To be completely honest with you, our whole engineering team went through about like two different naming exercises just to generate different names for build packs. At a team lunch a couple months ago, someone came up with Packeto, which uh, translates to Greek in, uh, uh, sorry, it translates to package in Greek. What we really liked about it was uh, Kubernetes translates to pilot in Greek. And um, 
we liked that uh, with Picado translating the package in Greek, we can come off with the association that like Picado build packs package your apps as container images that like any cloud native platform similar to Kubernetes can orchestrate. So the name kind of stuck at the end. Talk a bit about the collaboration between Cloud Foundry and VMware for this project. The interesting thing is that you know Cloud Foundry is part of you know um, Linux Foundation. Uh, CNCF is also part of Linux Foundation. VMware does a lot of work in Kubernetes space, and through Pivotal does a lot of work in. Is it very you know? It's kind of you know. Uh, you're talking about a galaxy where everybody is kind of sharing their you know raw material with each other. So talk about the chemistry between VMware, Cloud Foundry, CNCF around this um, uh, packet of build pack. I just I, I want to start probably by saying um, you know so the Baketo Build Pack project is a Cloud Foundry Foundation project right and, and so um, what that means is it's the same engineers that are and and contributors that are working on the traditional Cloud Foundry build packs are are building you know the Baketo collection right so you get all their past experience as a community you know building um, and maintaining and keeping up to date uh, these new you know, Cloud Native Build Pack compliant things. Um, you know, one of the one of the goals of the project team, which you know, I'm sure Ketchup could share a little bit more about as well, is that um, you know traditionally um, the Cloud Foundry build pack collection um, has seen the majority of the effort that was put into maintaining it coming from uh, coming from Pivotal. Um, there were certainly a lot of casual contributors, um, but it was something that kind of Pivotal bore the full burden on, and we think that it's incredibly important that. Um, now that the the cloud native build pack spec um, can be used in many different platforms, uh, that a lot of participants kind of rally around this because it's it's a opportunity to get really high quality you know build pack code um, brought into whichever platform you're using, whether it's Tekton or it's Google Cloud Run or whether it's you know the the CF for Kate's distribution of of Cloud Foundry. Um, there are going to be a lot of end users that should be able to amplify, you know, the the feedback loop, you know, back to the project team, and you know, we're very open to new contributors there. That's an excellent point. And um, what kind of community are you planning to build around these Pekado build packs? And when I talk about community, you know, there is no single community. There are vendors, there are you know, users, there are major contributors. Can you talk about that a, a bit? And also that. Uh, uh, while CNCF is kind of working on compliance, but where will people get their build pack? Can you talk about will there be a marketplace or where, there will be a kind of just the way there was a Docker Hub, a lot of you know resources, there are registries. So it's so a two part, what kind of community are you building around it? And uh, what will be the resources available for the community to, to build and consume these build packs? Um, I think just to add on a little bit to what Chip said, uh, community is like super important for us with this whole uh, Picado launch. I think what we're looking for ideally is a mix of uh, vendors helping us out similar to what uh, Cloud Foundry Foundation has had in the past, as well as like individual contributors. And what's super exciting to see is we just launched a couple days ago and we're already seeing a um, bunch of people reaching out and uh, trying out Picado build packs and interested in contributing. We're seeing that maybe like uh, people might be interested in helping us develop a Python Picado build pack, which is really cool to see. Um, to answer the second part of your question around like a marketplace or some sort of ecosystem, I think in the future, uh, that would be super uh, cool to have something like that. In the short term, what we're doing is we have this concept of builder images, where like a builder is effectively a set of build packs, Picado build packs that are packaged in there. So we ship our builders onto a GCR registry that users can then use to consume our, uh, our build packs. Is there any specific uh, build packs that will be available or you know, you'll know you be focusing on to start with? Yeah, uh, so we, right, like when we launched the other day, we have uh, officially uh, have Java, Node.js, .NET Core, um, PHP and Nginx Picado build packs available at the moment. Um, we're currently just getting started around uh, a Ruby Picado build pack and looking into publishing some sort of official pro uh, project-wide roadmap in the future to, um, to to show what's coming next. I, I think that's another really good opportunity for people to get involved. You know, um, uh, you know, as you said, there's there's been interest organically in in helping to add you know Python uh, as a build pack. Um, you know, there's there's sort of a uh, there's a very long tail 
of you know, different languages and frameworks that are used in, in the enterprise context. And so Paquetta was going out the door with a set of like a set of build packs that basically solve the majority of, of enterprise development use cases, right? Um, you know, Python is used very heavily, it's, um, uh, but it's a little bit less than Java, right? And so, you know, the, the tail starts to drop a little bit, um, but there's a lot of opportunity in, in those languages and frameworks that, um, that the Paquetta project team hasn't um, created, you know, on their own. Um, but those same patterns can be followed for, you know, languages that might be maybe lesser used. Um, and as the the kind of the community grows around, not just the cloud native build pack spec, right? Because anyone can build a build pack to that spec. Um, but I think the the practices of the Paquetto project um, lend themselves to um, a kind of a quality distribution of a build pack, right? If you search on GitHub for build packs, even if you're just looking at you know kind of the past version of, of the way build packs work, you find thousands of them, right? But some of them are stale. Some of them are, um, you know, they kind of half work. Um, and and I think that more important than, um, you know, exactly which build packs are offered today, is that the Paquetta project is an opportunity for people to come together around the discipline of building quality build packs and then maintaining them over time. Yeah, exactly. That's a really good point. And I think that like over the next coming weeks to months, we're really focused on improving a lot of our documentation to help enable things like this. Um, we have a couple tutorials right now just to help users create like a Picado style build pack and lots of tools and things like that out there. So my end goal, and I'm sure Chip agrees with this, which is like, I'd love to see um, a user just coming in with very little build pack experience and be able to build, say, a Rust cloud native build pack or something like that um, very simply and easily and support that. Um, and that that's like the end goal of where we want to go in terms of enabling the community to build build packs easily. So what happens to the exit? Because there are like a lot of build packs already there. So is there any path where they can just bring it into that? Or what happened to this existing build pack that a lot of companies or organizations have deployed already? For Cloud Foundry build packs, we're going to continue providing uh, support for CF workloads uh, into the foreseeable future. So what we did is we built a concept of like a compatibility layer on top of every one of our Picado build packs, um, which allow your... Uh, which allow us to ship a Cloud Foundry compatible cloud native build pack. And that enables your CF workloads to continue to work with Picado build packs. I think, I think one of the things to understand, and this is, this is where it, um, it gets a little bit confusing, right? There's, there's a, build packs as a concept has a fairly long history. So it started at Heroku. The CF then was emulating Heroku, right? It was like the open source alternative to Heroku. Um, and it implemented build packs in order to have that, that support. And for a while, um, they were largely compatible, right? You could take a Heroku build pack and you could use that in a, in a Cloud Foundry context or you could do, you know, the reverse. And so, you know, there, that worked for a while. Um, the, the, two, the two platforms, right? Cloud Foundry and open, open source community and then Heroku as a, as a product or, you know, a platform as a service that's all proprietary, um, they started to diverge, right? So, so the compatibility and, you know, within the ecosystem started to break down. Um, when the, the CNCF's Cloud Native Build Packs project um, kicked off, to me, that was actually one of the most important moments in, in kind of the platform as a service um, space in a number of years, because it represented a kind of a reconvergence or, of, um, you know, streams of work and sets of experiences with different end users um, that, that made a ton of sense for everyone. Um, but what that means, though, is that the, the CNB spec is, it's, it's a new way to build build packs, right? So all that historical work, um, you know, for the CF community, building that shim uh, is important, but it's really critical to understand that a cloud native build pack compliant build pack is different from a kind of traditional Heroku or, or Cloud Foundry, um, you know, older version build pack. They, they're implemented differently. Um, and so that it's it's like a it's a new generation of them, and that's where a, a new ecosystem, because there are multiple platforms that now support their use, um, is really going to kind of kick in here. So, Kashyap, you mentioned you know there will be a lot of resources documentation that will be coming up. So, what are the resources that are available at that 
this moment that people can you know either read or go through that to get you know uh, uh, more you know kind of aware of the project at the same time how they can get involved with the project so right now we have like a couple tutorials out there just around like how to get started with potato build packs as well as like how to go ahead and create your own potato build pack um, in terms of getting started and helping out and getting involved, I think the best way to get started right now is to join us on Slack. Uh, our Slack is slack.pakato, uh, P-A-K-E-T-O dot I-O, um, or visit our website and go through the content. The website is pakato, P-A-K-E-T-O dot I-O. Chip and Kashyap, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule and talking to us today about this project. And uh, good luck with that project. And thank you once again.